What's the dumbest thing a criminal has done or said to a cop? I read a theft suspect her Miranda rights, to which she stated in a recorded interview, I'm invoking my right to silence and a lawyer because I stole a lot of crap and I don't want to incriminate myself. I stopped someone who was in the area of a load of theft from motor vehicles. After a bit of questioning, I carried out a search and found numerous wallets, phones, and other things. He claimed that all of the cards were his, all 13 different identities. To be fair, he stuck to his story. He carried it all the way to court, going not guilty. Okay then, Mr. Jones, you're under arrest for 12 counts of theft. Mr. Fletcher, you're also under arrest for 12 counts of theft. Mrs. Rodriguez, you are under arrest for 12 counts of theft. Stopped a lady for speeding 15 miles per hour over the speed limit. I asked what her reason could be for going so fast. She said, I live here. You can't give me a speeding ticket. I live just down the street. I live here. This is unbelievable. I live here. So my personal favorite was when a bloke on a motorbike swerved in front of our squad car and crashed. We hopped out, picked the bike up off him. It was pinning his leg and asked, you all right, mate? To which he replied, of course I'm all right. What do you mean? Well, you just fell off your bike, mate. No, I didn't. He just kept insisting that there was no way he could have crashed and it must have been someone else. I called the cops on my roommate in college because she tried to attack me and she wouldn't cooperate with the cops. So she got cuffed and was screaming about how she was going to beat me good. They were like, yeah, you're going to beat her good. And she was agreeing. In court later, the judge asked her, So you think it's okay to beat someone good if they turn your TV off when you're not there? And she nodded and said, Yes, I do. And the judge just deep sighed. She got a big fat fine because they couldn't prove assault. She got charged with something lesser that had a max fine of about $1,500. Funny thing was, she had a pay or appear date for like three days before the one she was assigned at our trial. So they agreed to just merge the two dates so she wouldn't have to appear twice. So that means she already went to court for something else and got fined for something else too. Folks, in case you were wondering, if you blurt something like this out by accident one time, it might be in your best interest to revise your statement further down the line. People say honesty is the best policy. You can always be honest about seeing a better way forward. Friend who is an officer told me this one a little while ago. He was driving near where a known car thief lived, so he stops by. SUV in the driveway with no tags. My friend walks up, runs the VIN, stolen. Now the property had a house on it, and then out back, a small mother-in-law suite where said thief lived. Officer walks out back, knocks, and then hears a car door. Officer starts running, engine starts, and yeah, the thief is driving away in the stolen SUV. Officer knows where he ditches stolen cars at, so has an officer stake out that area. Sure enough, two hours later, the SUV rolls up with a jeep following it. SUV driver wipes down the dash, wipes down the outside door handle, and gets in the Jeep. Officer pulls them over and arrests them both. Why both? The Jeep is stolen too. Officer runs her license, sends another officer to her address, and guess what? She had a stolen car at her place too. Three stolen cars recovered, two people in jail, all because one officer decided to stop by a thief's last address. Not my story, but my police officer friends. He had gone in to arrest someone for dealing substances. He was in full uniform while someone else had already been there undercover. The substance dealer looks at the undercover cop and says, You're undercover. Yes, well done. He looks at my uniformed friend and says, You're undercover too. He was not. Then he looks at someone else, not a police officer at all, and says, And you! The guy responds with, How am I an undercover police officer? I just bought substances off of you. And that's how they made an unexpected arrest at that raid. Not a police officer, but my father was a 911 dispatch operator. My father was working one night and he gets a call from a man who was obviously drunk. 911, what's your emergency? Uh, yeah, I think I just heard a red car crash. Uh, you heard a red car crash? Yeah. Okay, police are on their way. Click. My dad finds out later that this guy was driving drunk and crashed his car not far from his house. The guy decides to get out of his car, stumble home, and dial 911 to report the fact that he'd had a car crash. In his drunken mind, he figured he'd report the crash as someone who heard it and he'd get off somehow. But he had to specify the color because apparently a red car crashing sounds different than a blue car crashing. 
Student paramedic here once went to a family with a two-year-old with difficulty breathing. Walked into the house to find four people and the parents smoking green herb with the baby in the room. The baby was crying, coughing, and spluttering. Couldn't believe my eyes. My mentor swiftly rang for police backup and we filled out some safeguarding paperwork concerns. Pretty sure they arrested them on scene for neglect. Dad's a detective. Had a murder case where a dog walker found a severed head in a park. Over the rest of the morning, they found a full set of chopped up body parts around that park. A trail of blood led from each part and they followed them all the way back to a nearby house. In through the door and up the stairs to a room covered in blood with a guy asleep in a bed. Turns out this guy had got drunk with a friend, had an argument, killed him, chopped him up and hid his body parts in the park before passing out back at the house. Police caught him literally red-handed. Apparently he was really confused how they got him so quickly. I was police at the time. In the middle of the night, my partner and I found a car in a cemetery. Stolen cars were dumped there regularly. The car had its windows down and it had only recently been left there. It was still warm to touch. It didn't flag up as stolen and through the window I could see a crystal pipe in plain view. That gives us the ability to search the car. Inside we find a bunch of crystal pipes, three and a half grams of crystal, a small amount of green herb, and a gat. There was also a tablet phone that was unlocked and while we were searching the car, the tablet kept on receiving messages from people trying to score crystal. I had a quick look through the phone and was able to figure out that the owner of the car had come out from the city. I worked rurally at the time. They'd come out to make a score from one of the local gangs. But the gang didn't want her turning up, so arranged to meet her at the cemetery and conduct business somewhere else. I leave a business card under the wipers, not my card, but the station's, and on the back I wrote that she, the owner of the car, should come down to the station if she wants to get her stuff back. And sure enough, she did, at nine in the morning, high as all heck, looking for her crystal and gas. All the people from To Catch a Predator. NBC has online transcripts, and they still come up with the stupidest excuses. The narrator can't really repeat any of those transcripts here, but I encourage you to read them if you want a rather morbid laugh about how people who have explicitly tried to proposition minors try to pass it off as something else. If they were telling the truth, it would be an almost Tobias Funke level of unfortunate phrasing. Suspect was caught for substance possession on the streets, and we were talking to the prosecutor to get a warrant for his house. Somehow he managed to call his wife without our notice, and as we realized what had happened, we heard him saying, Honey, go take the fish out of the fridge. After we got the warrant and searched his house, there was his fridge full of speed and the plates with fish which his wife had prepared for his return thrown in the trash. Retired cop here, boy do I have stories. One idiot move a guy made was to steal some poor girl's car. It was her first car, she worked full time, was a sweet little thing and we felt so bad, she was crushed. Also in the car for some reason was her cell phone. So a colleague who has the gift of talking crap really well calls the number. A guy answers. It goes a little something like this. Motherfricker, you stole my girlfriend's car. The answer went, Which I will frick you up and then frick your girlfriend. Bring it, motherfricker. No cops, no friends. Me and you, I'm at the Chevron on Main Street and 5th. I'm calling your witch butt out. Which I'm on my way. The phone clicks. Me? No freaking way, he's coming! The guy rounded the corner and pulls into the gas station. We hid our cars behind it and then when he parked we boxed him in. He had a Glock too. Freaking idiot. He was on probation and had a loaded piece. Yes, he showed up in the stolen car with a freaking shaved key in the ignition he used to steal it. Because people liked it so much, I talked to the original cop who has the gift of talking crap. He said a few months later at court, the guy claimed the gat was not his. As we found it under the driver's seat, he said it must be hers. So messed up. But the jury didn't buy it. We saw him shoving something from his waist under the seat when he saw us. Also, yeah, the look on his face was classic. It went from, I'm gonna kill this dude, to the look a prey animal gets when it knows it's done. He was killed a few years later in a chase in another stolen car. He was ejected from that one. Motor vehicle stop. License and registration, please. Proceeds to lean over the passenger seat, scoops up a handful of low mane, and tries to put it in the officer's hand. He was locked up for DUI fourth offense. To this day, I still wonder if he thought he was passing his correct paperwork or if the Chinese food was some sort of peace offering. Was witness to a crime and had to give evidence in court. Basically witnessed a girl crashing her car and barrel rolling it into a tree. She was clearly drunk. 
The fireman arrived after 10 minutes, her car had leaked petrol everywhere, and then her husband shows up on foot and tries to calm her down, followed by her mother in a car and the police. She tried to claim that she wasn't the one driving, even though no one else had been in the car. In court a year later, she said her mother had been driving, the one who showed up in her own car 10 minutes after the crash. She also punched an officer in the face and was pepper sprayed, but that's a whole other story. Needless to say, she was found guilty. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. Dispatcher had a guy call in and tell us that he's currently violating the protective order by being with his ex who is pregnant by him. Wants us to call the charge and get it dismissed so they can go inside the restaurant and eat. Officer is standing next to my partner who answers the call and asks the guy where he is so he can send the judge to him. The guy hangs up. Responded to an apartment complex for a kid eating a corn dog and was stuck on the roof. The FD arrives and gets the kid off the roof. Asked the kid why he was eating a corn dog on the roof. His answer was, because I threw it up there. His look of, duh, left me speechless. DUI trial. Defendant chooses to represent herself. She tries to introduce evidence during the trial, but is quickly blocked by the prosecution. The judge, maybe taking pity on the flaming train wreck that was this woman's defense, asks to see the evidence. It was a receipt from the bar she left before I stopped her that showed she purchased two large margaritas. Her whole defense was, I couldn't have been drunk after only two margaritas. She was found guilty. My initial reason for stopping her was that she drove down an embankment on the side of the road to get to a McDonald's drive through My friend is sober driving and there's not enough seats, so two people offer to go in the boot. On the way, she gets pulled over and the officer comes up to the window and asks if she knows why he pulled her over. She says, because of the two people in my boot? The cop says, no, because you failed to indicate at the last intersection, but tell me more about the people in your boot. These are my pants, but those are not my pockets. Can't make this crap up. I maintain that there's a small chance that there was a tiny portal in front of each pocket, redirecting to a less innocent man's accoutrements, but nobody listens to me. One of my favorite cops episodes was a guy they stopped, pulled some substances out of his pants, and his response was, those aren't my pants. The cop then said, oh, and whose pants are they and why are you wearing them then? The guy said, I don't know. My ex said to the cop who pulled him and his friends over, I'm so freaking high right now. I had a friend back in the day that earned the name DUI Don because he was driving a girl home after partying one night. She was off her rocker and he was only high. Got pulled over, could easily say that he's sober, was happy to blow into the tube and get out of it. The first thing he says to the cop is, I'm gonna level with you, I'm really high. He spent that night in jail. And the cherry on this, and the reason I know the full details of it all, is because the girl with him was 17 and bonus, homeless. When she didn't have anywhere else to go, she gave them my address, an 18-year-old living alone and I got to become her temporary legal guardian. Awesome night. Thanks, DUI Don. Sir, can I see your driver's license? I don't have one. Then why were you driving? I wasn't. I was traveling. I was the victim of burglary, but heard this from the police officer. I saw the guy breaking into my place on security camera and called them. They managed to arrest the guy while he was still inside packing up for my stuff. He was pretty cocky to the police, as he thought that as he hadn't actually left with his bag of swag, that he hadn't committed a crime yet. All he did was break a window. My grandpa was a cop. He told me a story about how when he was still in uniform filling up his squad car, someone tried to rob him with a knife. Needless to say, that didn't work out for him. Apparently it went something like this. Give me your wallet. What? Give me your wallet. Are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, now hand it over. Grandpa pulls out gun. Okay, you're under arrest. The robber displayed a shocked Pikachu face. My brother is a Detroit cop. Told me this one. They got a call from someone reporting their car was stolen. They show up and it turns out someone had already stolen the tires off the car and then a different group stole the actual car. They pushed it two blocks without tires and left perfect grooves in the street all the way to their garage. Their defense was, but we didn't steal the tires. Detroit. When we rob you, we really rob you. I'm a corrections officer. Two inmates got into a fight in a hallway. 
I was the closest to them and only saw the start of the fight out of the corner of my eye. In my report, I wrote that I saw the two inmates fall to the ground with one on top of the other. Later, the hearing sergeant was reading the report to one of the inmates so they could dispute any facts in the report they felt were untrue or biased. He asked the inmate if they wanted to dispute any facts in my report. The inmate said, Yeah, we didn't fall to the ground. I grabbed the other inmate and slammed his butt on the floor. What would have been a simple fighting charge turned into an assault charge. Woman is waiting for her DUI trial in the courtroom. The lawyers and judge are milling around and getting their paperwork in order. The trial starts in 10 to 15 minutes. The prosecuting attorney asks her if she wants to take the plea deal one last time. She refuses and goes on about how this is unconstitutional and the police and courts are corrupt and how she's going to take her kid to school, blah, blah, blah. She's starting to cause a bit of a scene, yelling, acting like a child, just being generally annoying. Someone in the room gets a whiff of alcohol. She's out on bond, so she can basically be given a PBT at any time for any reason. The judge orders one on her. She registers a point two two six in court. This woman who is on trial for DUI had the audacity to drive to court drunk and then moan and groan about how she isn't being treated fairly and we're all corrupt and this is unconstitutional. Not only that, but it explicitly states in your bond conditions that you cannot consume alcohol. So, I cut her off and bring her to the jail. She's still running her mouth during the walkover. I had nothing to say. I had absolutely zero sympathy for her. I could barely hold in my laughter on the walk over to the jail. The confession is my own. The cop said, You're going 95 miles an hour. Do you know what the speed limit is? No. It's 55 miles per hour. I'm sorry, sir. I thought it was 65. Not a cop, but I used to read a lot of police reports at my old job. My favorite was a woman who refused a breathalyzer by telling the cop, I won't blow on that, but I'll blow on your eggplant. In a city near to me, a guy murdered a woman, put her body in a large garment bag, and left her in a vacant lot. Unfortunately for him, he forgot to take the tags with his name and address off the bag from a recent flight. A would-be bank robber wrote his hold-up note and put it in his wallet. He got rattled at the bank and accidentally left his driver's license on the counter when he handed the note to a teller. A third crook just took on more than he could handle and apparently didn't watch the time. He had a long history of Grand Theft Auto and was hospitalized after being badly beaten in the parking lot of a sports area after a lacrosse game. The guy swore up and down that he had no idea why anyone would assault him there. Not that I want to be defending any of these people, but I feel like the stress of committing any of these crimes might overcome a lot of common sense. Personally, I rate my chances of getting away with a crime as less than zero, or maybe this is all a cover. In court, defendant called the judge Your Majesty instead of Your Honor. Friend's daughter and daughter's boyfriend got busted with a kilo of green herb. Friend's daughter says, Oh, we weren't going to smoke it, we were going to sell it. My boyfriend is a police officer. Last week, he pulled over a drunk driver who ended up speeding off. Car chase back to his house and the drunk guy tells him, I got home, it's okay, you can go now. Drunk guy continues arguing and it's 3am so his family wakes up and his son steps out the front porch and yells, Damn it, dad, you frickin' idiot, we told you to stop doing this. The serial killer BTK. He used to send taunting letters to the media and to the police about his crimes. He seemingly stopped all activity around 10 years ago when he started to communicate again. He asked the police if he could be traced if he sent them a floppy disk and they told him no. He sent them a floppy disk and they recovered data that included his name and his church. He was quickly arrested. My brother-in-law is a cop in a small town. Pulled a car over one night and recognized the kid. Smelled green herb inside the car and said, Give me the green herb and I won't search your car, won't give you a ticket and you can be on your way. The kid fights him and says he doesn't know what that smell is, there's no green herb and... How can I trust that you won't take me to the station if I give it to you? Brother-in-law promises again that if he hands him the green herb, he'll let him go, no questions asked. Kid keeps being a moron. Brother-in-law searches the car and finds many, many, many more substances hidden all over as well as green herb. Brother-in-law says, All right, let's go to the station. The kid gets upset and says, You said you weren't going to do this. See, I couldn't trust you. I groan and laugh every time I think of that. What a dummy. My cop brother told me that this one time he took lunch at Popeye's while in uniform, except for the hat. Once inside, the cashier started taking his order but then stopped halfway and turned to a co-worker that just walked up. 
I don't remember exactly what was said, but basically the guy taking my brother's order asks the other guy if he took his green herb. The other guy says yes, but he didn't smoke at all and proceeds to hand over the green herb. The guy then says, cool, not to worry, he's got another stash in his car for emergencies like this. My brother then said that he just wanted to eat some lunch. The guys then realized he was a cop. One guy said something like, not again. As my brother started arresting the cashier, he said that he thought my brother was the security guard. So my brother, just trying to make a joke out of it, says, oh, you smoke herb with your security guard? To which the guy says, no, just my manager and his buddy. But the real funny part was when he asked another employee if the security guard was around and the employee said they didn't have one and didn't know what the cashier was talking about. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.